All right, I started up video series, or I guess you can call series, I don't know. It's done a video replacing the U-joint rear drive shafts on this 2019 Kawasaki Terex 4LE. Um, I didn't do a, a beginning to it. I just dove into it, started recording. So uh, what you're about to watch is... Uh, my adventure in uh, removing and replacing, removing the drive shaft and replacing the U-joint and the rear portion of the shaft next to the differential. And then uh, I'm gonna also be doing a video on uh, replacing the CV boot on the front here. It's the outer CV boot. I'll do a video on that as well. But let's get into the uh, rear drive shaft. Well, I was going to do a video of uh, replacing the U-joints on this thing. Hoping that I could do it. Uh, let me shut this door. <whistles> hoping I could do it from the top. I removed the back door. I got the seats out. 2019, by the way. Kawasaki Terex. back u joints out front one I, i'm not sure i'll find out as soon as i get everything out but i'm gonna have to go up through the bottom to remove the drive shaft nothing on uh, youtube showing you how to change this stuff out can't get this floor pan out i took the door off thinking that that was going to help but i don't know don't have a clue call the shop they won't tell you how to do it my question is what if that piece of plastic breaks how the heck do you replace it drives me crazy had to go buy tools to remove the door because i didn't have two sets of star bits by the way if you take the doors off it's a t30 star bit that takes it off double sided uh, there you go. See, let's see if I can get to focus. Anyhow, won't focus. Double sided. So now I'm gonna get the drop cord and uh, get some light up underneath it. I'm gonna put all this junk back together, I guess, first. Uh, I gotta get down there and remove the skid plates and see if I can get to the drive shaft that way. I was thinking I could take all this stuff out and then there's a metal tunnel right there that covers the drive shaft and the exhaust. I thought, take that out, get in there, pry bar, and finagle around, and get the drive shaft loose from the stump and the trans and uh, get it out so I could replace the joints that way, but dead end road. I'll get you back on here as soon as I get the, everything set up. All right. So I'm going to take this back skid plate out. And it looks like right there that the front center, I guess you call the center right under the engine, overlaps that back one, so that'll have to come down as well. And then we'll, uh, we should be able to access the drive line to get it out and replace the joints. We'll see where we're at when I get it out. All right, after some more research, I have determined, which I hope is true, that right here, this uh, boot on the drive shaft has a C-clip in it. Not a C-clip, but a uh, snap ring. And you can slide that boot back, remove that snap ring, and it'll allow the drive shaft to collapse which will allow that uh, knuckle I guess to collapse onto the drive shaft and you can remove the drive shaft from the rear stump and the output shaft on the transmission so that means I gotta put all this back together for nothing all that work for nothing but that's how you figure out how to work on stuff 
research and uh, busted knuckles and frustration. So I'm going to try to remove that boot there or slide it back see if that uh, snap ring is there. And if so, hopefully we're on the bigger, better things. Get this drive shaft out until I get those huge ones in. I'll bring you back. All right. I don't know if you can... Let me see if I can get up here to it. This is the boot that was on that shaft. And I slid that uh, snap ring. You can see it right there. There's a groove right there where my fingernail's at. That's the groove that it sits in. You just have to take your pliers, snap ring pliers, or uh, yeah, and uh, open it up, slide it back on the shaft, and then uh, you just work this bad Jones. There's the side that was on the stump. There's the side that's on the shaft. You slide it forward. You may have to, to use a little persuasion, but you can see. Let me get it up here so you can see it. The spring's in the way. I'm laying on the floor there. There's the output shaft or the input shaft of the rear differential. It came off fairly easy. Now then. She was bad. And this other side, I can barely move it. This locked up. So let's get that in the vise and uh, see if we can get that joint out and the new one in. All right, I got it set up in the vise uh, right here. Got these C clips. I already took the screwdriver and the hammer and picked it on out. I know my filming skills suck. Uh, but I'm going to finish knocking those out and then we'll get to uh, flip it and get them out on that side. You see the back side of that one. And then we'll uh, proceed to try to knock these caps loose and uh, get that joint out. Sounds like I can hear my cousin driving up the ground. Seated in there pretty good. Well, see if I can find a punch. Be right back. Here we go. So we just punch and drag it out.
I think I'm going to worry about the cat going on. This is my dad's shop, by the way. He works on Volkswagens since retirement. Specializes in diesels. But about any Volkswagen question you might have, he could probably answer that. Do some surgery on this side. I don't know. There she comes. There's that one. All right. Now the fun part. I'm not gonna hell out of it to get the get these caps on this. Hey Justin. Walter today. Oh one though. I got another light out in the snow. Not a sponsor, as you say. If I can find a big punch, blunt. Don't really need to cut the edge. See if we can get that down in there on that. Right in there. I'd stop here and see what I can come up with. All right, I want to show you guys something. This thing has been that way for a while. Look at that. That's insane. When I bought it, it was making a noise. I bought it used. It's a 2019 Terex four seater. And uh, I checked it. They looked like they were tight. And uh, I continued to ride it like that's a thousand wonders. It didn't break down on me out on the trail somewhere. But uh, <laughs> it's football shape. Been that way for quite a while. I think it has like uh, 2,400 miles on it, 2,600 miles, something like that. But uh, yeah, that was a booger getting out. I knocked the shit out of it. Things all rusted up. Um, but man, I'm not, I've changed quite a few in my day four wheelers, Jeeps, trucks. But that's the first I've seen this football shape. Well worn. Kind of embarrassing, but uh, I haven't had this thing very long. I bought it May of 2020, and it's January of uh, 20. No, I bought it. May of 21, that's right. And uh, it's January 2022. Had it on about four rides. Very little riding around home here. So I'm going to finish getting these caps off and we'll get the new joint in. All right. I've got it all off now. 
Well, I say all off. I got this one side off. I'll clean all that up. It's just rusty looking. Nothing major. I'll take uh, some paper to that. I don't know if that's the other side. But, uh, yeah, that's the one that I showed you just a few minutes ago. And uh, this is the other side that was still hanging in there. It's oblong football, somewhat football shaped itself. Crazy. Now this is locked up. I mean, I, I can't move it. So, on to that, getting that one out. What a mess. <laughs> what a mess. Here we go. That one came out pretty easy. Needle bearings falling off. Got everything uh, all stuff I can hold on to. It. There she goes. There she goes. Now then, let's see, get this punch here. Slide through. Get that ear right there. Bam. Now, reassembly. A little bit aggravating. I'll bring you back when I get it all put back together. I don't know if there's much need in uh, showing you how to do it. Clean these uh, stirrups up here. Yoke, whatever you want to call them. It may take some memory cloth to it, kind of clean that up. For the most part, it looks like it's all right. Kind of looks like that cap. This is the one that's on the, this is the dust cap end. You can see it. That's the end that goes next to the differential, rear differential. It kind of looks like at some point that, that cap's been spinning in there. I don't know. Feels all right though. I don't see anything. Major, major. Bit of an edge on that one right there. That may need to be cleaned up right there. damage that taking that out with a punch. Kind of looks like it. Let's take, take some paper to that. May not be an edge big enough to be worried about. Maybe the cat may just push right on through. Not too bad. I mean I can feel it with my finger. I think it's okay. Clean this rust out the inside so I can. Put up with it, evidently, as the old saying goes. Maintenance is key. Spend so much money on something like that to have fun with it. If you want to keep it up, you can have more fun with it. Don't understand. <laughs> something I'll keep up with now. I don't think that the front U joint is as bad shape. Matter of fact, it looked like it was fine. I might take it out and grease it. <laughs> put it back in. I'll put some. Uh, I'll put some grease in there right there. Maybe I'll put it back on. It looks fine. Now it's clean. Inside, that's real nice. I'll spread grit out. It's got some grit in it. Of 
part, this looks like it's good shape too. Not as bad as I thought. Down there, it's got some blue in it. it looks like it's been hot. I'm gonna say that that's probably been cat's been spinning in that too. Good lord. And before anybody comments and says, hey, did you hear it squealing? Well, I have a stereo in there. When that stereo's on, you're not going to be listening and hearing squealing unless it's just extremely loud. So I didn't hear any major squeaking or squealing. And I did notice the clanking. Therefore, that's why I'm on here now. Replacing these u joints. All right, we'll get the other joint. We'll see if we can get it pressed in. All right, the new U joint. I didn't buy the Kawasaki one because they wanted ninety-five dollars. Ninety-five dollars for the U joint. Why? That's crazy. So I know it's backwards. I'm doing reverse image on the on my phone. It's Precision Universal joint. And the part number is 450, or the joint is a 450. 832 part number. Bought it at O'Reilly's. Bought both of them, because I was going to replace the front one as well. I think it's $52 for both of them. Might have been $42. It's something $2. 42 or 52 Get on the website, look it up. You should know by that what it costs. Comes with a grease fitting. And there, you've got your C clips in there. All four of them. I'm still amazed by that. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, this side looks good. Crazy. Looks like that dang thing the cap was just spinning on top of it. So, this. Let's see if we can't start this reassembly process here. I need to figure out the orientation of the uh, grease fitting. I think the most room was to the, to the back. So that needs to be the direction in which the grease fitting would be right there. And it's kind of cupped in. It's it's in has an indention in it. I don't know if you can see it on camera. Yeah, you can see it. Other side. Well, I guess they're about the same. It does look like this side's more indented than the other. I always hate putting these back together because Leaves needle bearing real easy. Pain the book. Alright. So far, so good. There we go. I said that. Grease fit need to go to the back, so let's see if that works. It appears that will push right in. Man. Bring it right back. Alright, I've got the U joint in the vise. Try to press it in, looks like she's going just fine. One side, here comes the other. What I need to do now is back it back off and take these other caps that are removed from the old one. Place them like that so we can seat 
these caps and I get the snap rings on. I'll get the grease fit in. Back his fives back off. So I can do just that. On it just one at a time. There we go. All right. And we'll do the snap rings. C clips, whatever you want to call them. I know they got proper terminology. If I can, I'm gonna see if I can press that one on in a little further there. I mean, I know the snap rings in, but I just feel better if it seat a little. There we go. Bam. In there. Fine. All right. Looks good. There we go. Let's put it in there like that. Such caps. Again. All I'm going to do is get the. Uh, That one like that. This should be lined up. Now that we're lined up, the vice back up. Oh yeah, I couldn't believe uh, when I called. shop I was on the back porch from but they wanted ninety ninety five dollars ninety six dollars something like that for those huge ones. I about died. I was like good lord that's just that's just fucking theft. So I did some research That's exactly what it was. Don't know about that grease fitting. That's going to suck ass if I have to take that back off. It looks like we're going to have to. That's not going to work. Alright, folks. Grease fitting doesn't work. 
I'm going to have to figure out a way to plug it up. It doesn't allow, see that? It doesn't allow for free range of the U joint. So, it's going to come back out. Better to figure it out now, huh? How am I going to get it back out? <laughs> I'll be back. Alright, I've got to take it back apart and I have the uh, that grease fitting removed. I'm going to uh, it's currently six o'clock in the evening, so on a Saturday. So I need to run out uh, real quick to the local tractor supply and see if I can't find something that I can plug that hole with. I check my grease fitting box, and uh, I don't have any plugs. Hopefully, they sell something to plug that hole off with, and uh, we'll get it plugged up and get it reinstalled. I'll be back. All right, here we are back. It was six o'clock when I left. I had to stop by my house. About six thirty when I left, came back, and, or left to go to tractor spot. Came back with these. Just a straight, short, straight grease fitting. I couldn't find anything to plug it off, and I don't. Uh, I don't know about going to an auto parts store. I got these at Tractor Supply. So we're going to stick those in, see if that doesn't work, and uh, hope and pray for the best. Here we go. All right. Got it back in. Trying to get it pressed in place. I think this side right there. I'm getting into the side of the yoke. Right there. Get it tight back up here. Line back up. Let's see. Get this in there. All right. Get this one side in for sure. motion on the joint. Let's see if I can get that cap pressed down just a cheap bit more. Clip seating. There we go. I did grease it. Didn't have the camera on for that, but I did. I put grease in it. So we're all good. Now then. 
I'm gonna check that front one on the shaft and see what we got on it and I'll be back with you all right I have it back on let me show you how easy I'm gonna stick my hand through here is it sliding off the stump and my hands through on the driver's side that's that out just gonna wiggle it around bam slides over see how easily it slides off that shaft Press it back. Get that dust cap up over that tail, that shaft. See, and spin it around, line you splines up. It's gonna make a lot. It's gonna line your splines back up. Lighting it going back on. There it went. Bam. And then right here, where my thumb's at, right there, that's the snap ring that needs to slide back up to right there. Focus, camera, focus. Right there. So I'm going to get that slid back in place and locked in, and then we'll put the boot back on. I, I put some white lithium grease on. I clean that uh, shaft up on the, the input shaft for the rear end. I cleaned it up, got all the rust off of it, sprayed some white with lithium grease on it, and um, should be good to go. All I have to do is put the skid plate back on. After get this snap ring back in place. We'll get this snap ring back in place and then um, boot on, and I'll bring you back. All right. I've got the uh, snap ring back in place, boot back on. Things buckled up. I'm gonna put this skid plate back on, and I gotta put these hub assemblies back together on the rear, spindles back in, whatever you want to call the damn things. Wish I had my head out of my hind end to begin with. I don't own that, uh, but uh, here we go. We'll get it put back together and get it on the ground. Like I said earlier on, I got uh, battery issues I got to deal with. Terminals corroded and whatnot. I want to get all that cleaned up and the batteries charged or the battery charged back up. And then uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll take her for a ride. So uh, I'll get it. I may do a video of putting this stuff back together, or a little clip here putting this uh, hub assembly back together. But uh, I don't know. Here we go. All right. Started putting the spindles back together. Uh, pasture side, them bolts in. Uh, spacer is on. Go slide the hub assembly on. Getting ready to get it cleaned up. Slide it on. Not too bad. Biggest thing is keeping everything clean. Worst mistake you can make, and I've made it, you can look up under this thing, is to not work on them when they're like this. It's January 2022. Uh, I put this thing in here at Thanksgiving. I had some warm weather. I could have gotten it back out and cleaned it up, washed it, but with my work, I was just limited on my time, and family comes first, getting stuff done with them and whatnot. Uh, holidays and then uh, just work keeps you pinned down so that's my biggest advice is just try to get things cleaned up that way you're not constantly having to clean around on everything when you're putting it back together i mean that it's necessary to do that but with it muddy like this you got to go above and beyond cleaning to make sure you don't get any grit where there's no there doesn't need to be grit like in your bearings so, I'm going to get this put back together, then the uh, wheel's on, and then I'll bring it back. We'll drop her down. I bought some uh, fog lights. I may include that in. Not fog lights. Well, there you go. Driving lights, whatever you want to call them. I already have some up on the A-pillars, but I'm going to change them out with these new ones that I bought. I may include that on here, but we'll see. Getting to be a pretty long video, I think, so I may not do that. But I'll bring it back when I get the wheels on. All right, wheels and tires back on. 
Not too bad. My dumb ass forgot the skid plate though, so I gotta jack it back up, get earlier and put the skid plate back on. And uh my cousin Terry finally made it up here. We just been drinking beer and bullshit. We're gonna yank this battery out, get it cleaned up, charge on charge, and then tomorrow put it back in and uh see if she'll fire up, we'll take her for a ride. 